Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking Death Corpse. It is a German Rotbier. Today we're going to be bringing to you another made-for-TV movie, 1981's Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, directed by Frank DeFelida. He actually wrote the novella and the screenplay for The Entity, which we had covered. The movie stars Larry Drake, who we all know <laughs> as Dr. Giggles. <laughs> It also stars Lane Smith. He was in Mighty Ducks. He plays the evil coach of the Hawks. And of course, in Son-in-Law. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Durning is also in this, and he is old school, man. He's in yeah. a lot of old classics. The movie starts out in a small town setting. Charles Ritter, Bubba is his sort of nickname. He's mentally challenged, kind of frolicking around in the flowers and stuff with this little girl named Mary Lee. A lot of people in the town are frowning upon this friendship between the two. Four guys in particular that are really pissed off. Mary Lee decides to go into this yard. No, Bubba won't go. It turns out that there's this dog and it ends up attacking Mary Lee. Bubba didn't do it! Bubba didn't <laughs> do it! Right away, even he knows that yep. everyone will blame him yep. for hurting Mary Lee. Otis rounds these guys up. They get in their fucking pickup truck chasing after poor a Bubba. poor Bubba. That fat guy <laughs> so, <laughs> just stop and take his like heart pills. <laughs> Why they send him on foot? He should be fucking driving the truck. These guys are grossly out of shape. <laughs> mama, mama, what do I do? It's like, okay, you know what we do? We play the hiding game. Yeah. Finally, these four fucking guys start harassing the mother. And the mother's like, get the hell off my property. You know what you're doing, don't you? You're obstructing justice. Yeah. It's like, who she, are you? You're the yeah. mailman. You're <laughs> you're, <a> justice. <laughs> you're the fucking mailman. <laughs> the bloodhounds end up lead him off into the field. And there's this haggard looking scarecrow. And he keeps getting closer and closer. And finally, he looks into the eyes of the scarecrow. And he sees two eyes looking yeah. back at him. And you can see the fear yeah. in the eyes. Bubba didn't do it! Pull their guns out, just waiting, and it's super tense, yeah. eh? Otis takes the opening shot, and they just blast poor Bubba full of fucking holes. They all follow suit and unload, just yeah. unload into this <laughs> poor guy. Right after they're done turning Bubba into Swiss cheese, they get a call on the CB radio with the guy on the other end saying, Mary Lee's gonna be all right. Bubba took her into the hospital, and turns out he's the one who ended up saving her. Otis put a pitchfork in Bubba's hand to make it look like self-defense almost. The fucking judge, I think he's in cahoots with everybody, lets these guys go. The lawyer is pretty pissed off. All I need is one shred of evidence. One of Otis's cronies is like kind of fixing up his truck and Harless's wife comes to him and is like looking out in the field and says, well, I didn't know you were planting already. He goes, well, no, I'm not planting. Why would I be planting? She says, well, because you got a scarecrow up there. And the, he looks up and way in the distance, you see the scarecrow that looks exactly like the scarecrow the Bubba was dressed <laughs> yeah. up in. You guys, like, what are you doing playing a stupid trick on me? That's an awful trick to play. And we didn't do it. Yeah. So they go visit their buddy Otis. <laughs> you find out he's living in some fucking boarding house. Otis obviously thinks that somebody's trying to scare them. Harless is pretty freaked out. He's been drinking heavy all day and he comes yeah. back home and he hears something kind of in the barn. He goes investigating. He's walking through the barn, goes up to the loft and you can hear a piece of machinery turn on and he gets kind of startled and he falls off into this kind of like wood chipper thing. Yeah. Because it's made for TV. They can't show all this gore. It just cuts to these preservatives being put on this <laughs> plate. And it's Otis sitting in, like, having some communal breakfast with all these old men, taking way too much, like, everyone's <laughs> looking at him like, yeah. you fucking fat pig. <laughs> well, didn't you hear? Well, they found Harless dead. Otis assumes that either the district attorney is after them, or that Bubba's mom is, is after them. Otis goes to the mother's house. He comes up and he puts his hand around her mouth and... I don't know if he suffocates her or he just scares the shit out of her. Yeah. But he ends up killing her by accident. Turns on the gas burner and walks away and the house explodes. <laughs> Philby sees the scarecrow at his work, mm -hmm. runs up to it and he sees it and he's terrified and he kind of collapses. 
It's nighttime now, and he's finishing up at work. He hears all these hogs. He gets trapped in like this grain silo, and then all the grain starts pouring in. He can't get out. It's been mm. locked, and his hands kind of mm -hmm. like he's got the flashlight, and it's like just. Yeah. Uh, and then it just fills up, and he's done. They hear about Philby's death, and at this point, Skeeter is flipping out because he doesn't know what's going on. He, they don't know if Bubba is still alive and after them. If the district attorney is after them, it's obviously not Bubba's mom anymore. But he's ready to confess. Otis convinces him, let's go dig up his grave. And they open up the coffin, and that's where we're going to end it. If you want to find out what happens with Otis and Skeeter and maybe Bubba, keep watching. Why are we talking about this movie? Why did we pick this one? Well, because it's fucking great. <laughs> yeah. For a made-for-TV movie, this is like... It's probably about as good as you get. Yeah. Like, the top notch. You can have a good story and have it told poorly, mm -hmm. but this is a good story told very well. Yeah. The way it, they unravel it and the way they lay it out and the pacing, it's all just so perfect. The music is fucking scary. The music is scary, yeah. It, it helps elevate the scenes. Everything is mostly implied. Yeah. Right? And Yeah, you don't see any kills. No. Which is great. You don't see who's doing it. Yeah. You do see the odd point of view shot. When um, Philby gets stuck in that silo, and you see the POV shot of somebody walking up to it and like locking it, right? Yeah. But you don't know who. So it's uh, kind of up to the viewer. It's also a great mystery too. It's yeah. a good mystery movie. Who's up to it? Is it the spirit of Baba? Is it the lawyer? Is it Merrily? The characters, right? That's oh. like a hallmark of this movie. All the characters are fucking great. You start off with Baba, like Larry Drake is acting his ass off as Bubba. It's such a memorable character that uh, Bubba didn't do it. It's just like burned in your brain after this movie. And the look in his eyes, like even if he didn't say one word throughout the movie, when they have the shot of him in the scarecrow costume, and the fear in his eyes is just enough. Even the bad guys, right? You fuck that Otis guy. Yeah. You fucking hate him. You want something to happen to him yeah. so bad throughout yeah. the whole movie. One of Otis's cronies, Skeeter, seems like a simple guy who's just kind of along for the ride. He kind of mm -hmm. does what the pack does. And you kind of even sympathize for him at the end when he's flipping his lid. He's going crazy. And for a TV movie too, mm -hmm. the cinematography is great. A lot of the shots, the shots of the open fields mm -hmm. and yeah, and, the, the little scarecrow with yeah. the giant field, right? Yeah, it's it's shot very well. They took their time to really make this movie look cinematic, mm -hmm. even though it wasn't a cinema release. The tension that this movie builds too, right? Because you're just waiting for, it's like, oh, I want him to die. You're waiting, you're waiting, you're yeah. waiting. It's the build up to it, right. and not necessarily the actual event of it. But you're not bored, because no. you learn a lot more about the characters, you learn a lot more about the story. There's a lot of subtleties. Nothing is crammed down your throat in this movie. Yeah. Like, the subtle thing that Otis is like either like an alcoholic or a recovered alcoholic. Same thing with Otis maybe being a pedophile. They don't really come out and say it, but it's implied. Yeah. And it's enough for you to kind of get yeah. it, right? Even the fact that it all takes place around Halloween time is not shoved down your throat. It's yeah. not forced. Nothing is forced nope. in this movie. So if you like a good, like, revenge story, you definitely have to check out this movie. It's a lot like The Crow, I find. It's like almost the same story as The Crow. Right. Scarecrow. The Crow is <laughs> yeah. kind of the same. A spirit coming back and taking a revenge on the person who did them wrong is basically the story. And if you like The Crow and want a different spin on that whole tale, Definitely check out The Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Yep. And of course, like Otis, keep drinking. <laughs>